What's up, fellas? In the second video of the day, we're going to be talking about the NBA Draft Lottery, which, you know, on April 22nd in what is a very, very odd season scheduling wise might seem a bit weird. But I was sitting around, I was thinking the other day, I was like, man, we've had crazy draft lotteries in the past, right? You know, Patrick Ewing lottery, uh, you know, Zion. There, there's this, you need to go out and get like the best guy in the draft, right? And so the lottery's held significance there. But with the amount of pick swaps and traded picks and all these different things that we kind of have to deal with now, this NBA draft lottery, you could argue, will be the most impactful of the last 10 or so years in the NBA, maybe since the LeBron lottery, obviously him ending up in Cleveland. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in the second video of the day. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every single day on this channel. So it's a great place for the most consistent NBA content on YouTube. If you're new here, by the way, what's up? My name is Tucker. You can also leave a like rating on the videos as well. And you can check me out at various socials in a link tree link down in the description below. With all those things said, Let's talk about this year's NBA draft lottery. So as I said, in the past, we've had incredible players go with the first overall pick and going into the draft, people all kind of knew this guy's going to be really good to be huge if this team or that team ended up with this player. Zion comes to mind, Anthony Davis, LeBron, Tim Duncan, going all the way back to Patrick Ewing, right? But there's a different wrinkle here because in this draft, I think it's pretty clear that a lot of people are on the same page that Cade Cunningham's the best player in the draft, right? So he's kind of the prize everybody's looking for at number one. But it's pretty clearly like a five to maybe if you want to include the Mitchell kid from Baylor, a six player draft, right? And there's so many different variables within the lottery that not that they haven't existed before, but they've never been as prevalent as they are right now. Okay, let's go through them. First up, the Houston Rockets have the worst record in the Western Conference, by the way, it might be the worst record overall in the league. And they could end up with a pick not even remotely close to where it should be because of all the picks they've sent out and they're just in a weird spot with their own draft picks. They need a top four selection this year to guarantee that they're going to keep their pick. If it's in the top four in the lottery, they keep it. That's a huge boost to what they're going to be doing moving forward. They've got all the other Brooklyn picks as well, but they need a top four pick in this draft. Just given the way that their roster is right now, that would be a huge, huge plus for them. And if they don't end up with that top four pick, then some, some, some things get switched around. Oklahoma City potentially moves up. Miami potentially moves up. There's all this different craziness, and they need that top four protection. And that is just a little bit of a taste of the craziness that happens when you have all these different draft picks traded and all these different pick swaps, not only in this lottery, but moving forward, but specifically with the talent in this class and the Cade Cunningham stuff at the top. Until we do get to that double draft where you have high school and college kids in the NBA draft at the same time, this is going to be unmatched in terms of, uh, of relevance across the league, in terms of impact across the league. Another one to consider outside of the Rockets one is that Warriors Timberwolves pick swap, right? So the Warriors get that pick top three protected from Minnesota. If it gets protected, it rolls over to the following season. If Minnesota can end up with a top three pick in this class, that is such a huge boost for them in a similar way that it is for Houston because they've got pieces, of course, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, first pick in the draft last year, D'Angelo Russell's there, but they need somebody else to really raise the ceiling of this group. But then once they start developing all those guys, things can start to look really interesting in Minnesota, right? But if they lose that pick, not only does Golden State get a fantastic asset potentially with the fourth or fifth or sixth pick in the draft, but Minnesota... It, it's it, it's such a momentum killer for them to suddenly not have what is going to be their best asset moving forward. And of course, they lose their, their pick next year, but they need something to boost up the talent of this group. And if they don't get their pick this year, that'll end up being a huge, huge price to pay in exchange for DeAnthony Russell in that trade going back. And for Golden State, that not only, if they end up with a fourth or fifth or sixth pick, not only helps them add a player to their roster right now that they certainly need, given the limited amount of help that Steph is getting this season, but it also impacts their ability to make a huge trade down the road as well when they could possibly trade that pick as well as James Wiseman or they could split up the assets regardless Golden State is in a much better spot if they end up with the fourth or the fifth pick in this year's draft a draft that is largely known as a five-player draft rather than the unknown of an unprotected 2022 Minnesota pick a Minnesota team that if they do get this top three pick could actually be decent next year and certainly wouldn't hold the same value that a four or a five pick in this class would huge implications for those two teams but we're not done Okay, Chicago, they still have an outside shot here of making the play-in game, but they owe their pick to Orlando this year, top four protected. We've seen some crazy stuff happen in the lottery in the past, right? And there's a handful of different scenarios here. Chicago stays with the Orlando, gets like a late lottery pick. Cool, they're in there. Chicago moves up, but not to the point where they're in the top four 
but they can't move up in a hugely significant way, but it still helps Orlando out, right? Or somehow by some crazy stroke of lottery luck, Chicago ends up in the top four. And I'm not positive how the protection works moving forward. I don't know if it rolls over to 22. I don't, because they, they, they owe their 23 pick to Orlando as well. But something would happen with the pick rolling over there. And Chicago goes from, this is not necessarily a disaster, but we gave up our pick. We got Vucevic. We only made the play-in game or we didn't make the play-in game at all. And we're going to lose our pick to lottery luck. You're in the top four. You get an awesome player and everything changes, you know, because you've got the Zach Levine 2022 free agency stuff hanging over you. You've got the fact that you already owe your 2023 pick as well. Crazy lottery luck, like we saw one time with them getting Derrick Rose, could absolutely shift things in a crazy significant way there in Chicago. And these are just a few examples of why the lottery is so great. It's one of the greatest things that the NBA does from not only a content perspective, but just overall, right? Between this and free agency and the trades and the draft picks and stuff, it allows for so much variance and so much movement. It's not so rigid. It's not so much, this is the worst team. They get the best player. Hopefully they don't screw it up. You can have teams like New Orleans last year that are incredibly different now, having moved up to the number one spot in that draft than they would have been had they stayed and drafted at seven or eight or so, right? And that could, despite all these other protections and, th and things to keep an eye on, could end up being the biggest difference maker in this class because there are a lot of teams that are right on the edge from a talent perspective of being very, very good. Chicago is a team that come to, comes to mind, right? Um, you've got you've got other teams, you know, like New Orleans potentially could move up. Memphis, like there's, there's teams that could end up being technically in the play-in game and then their lottery odds stay the same and it, it, you could end up with a team, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th best in the lottery odds, move up to top four like we saw with Memphis in the past, like we saw with New Orleans in the past and completely change the direction of their franchise, right? Like what if, imagine, imagine if San Antonio moves up in the draft and they get a top four pick, right? How cool would it be for the Spurs to have like a real legit guy, right? Toronto, they've been playing better lately, but what if they end up with one of the worst records and they end up with a really, really good pick in this draft and they develop a player there? There's so many different levels of intrigue with the lottery in general, but specifically to this year, because it's very clear that there's a top tier of players here, headlined by Cade Cunningham, of course, but there's a handful of really, really good guys. And there's honestly a lot of young talent in the league right now. There's not very many teams that you look around and you say, they don't have any kind of really good young player and they're also not good in this moment most teams have one or the other right and it, it, it's an implication of these big superstar trades that we only really think about once the lottery rolls around at the time that James Harden gets moved we're not really thinking about all of these picks that get sent to Houston it just they're just kind of assets right all these picks that Oklahoma City has and New Orleans have we're just thinking about them as okay they're assets but then once we really get down to it and you have to deal with the pick swap of of the Rockets and the Heat and the Thunder and you have to deal with the protection of the Wolves uh, and Warriors pick and you have to think about all the different implications of what that previous trade meant and all these different pick swaps it, it, it is, it's mind boggling to think about the different variations of 10 years from now, hopefully on YouTube still, I could make a, you know, an NBA trade rewind video and they're from, you know, the, the Drew Holiday trade, even as minor as that might seem. And it could have a crazy large impact on the league, not only because of the, trip, the, the, the draft picks and the pick swaps, but also because of the impact of the lottery. And it's, I'm just, I'm just getting y'all ready right now. It's going to be absolutely insane to see how this lottery shakes out with all the different variables at the top, as well as throughout it. You know what I mean? I mean, this could be a truly, truly league altering draft as well as lottery. And above it all, I'm honestly just rooting for teams like San Antonio and teams like Toronto that are competent and know how to develop players. I'm hoping they move up into the top five in this class so that you know, this young talent that's coming in can be developed in the correct way and really help out those teams. Um, or they go to teams that, you know, already have a good amount of young talent like Minnesota and potentially, you know, have an opportunity to build something really, really special if they can develop those young guys. There's a lot of really cool scenarios. Like if, if Oklahoma City ends up with Cade Cunningham, in addition to all the other picks they have and stuff, that's going to be insane. New Orleans, same thing. Like if New Orleans gets crazy lottery luck again, and they can move up to add somebody to the Zion Ingram pairing and all these future picks and stuff like that, that would be insane. You know, Houston potentially getting the guy with the future picks that they have. 
even a team like Washington, if somehow they, you know, they don't make the playoffs and they move up and they add something to the to the Beal Westbrook thing, either maybe that makes Beal stick around depending on who they get and how good they are, or it helps already, you know, kind of with their future rebuild stuff um, is they do potentially uh, move Beal and, and Westbrook this offseason. All those things are just crazy, crazy variables to consider, and I can't wait. I can't wait for the lottery. I can't wait for the draft, for free agency, for the offseason, for the playoffs. I know it's been a weird season. It's been a bit of a slog at times. Things are about to get very, very exciting for the league. I hope you guys are excited um, right there along with me. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the second video of the day. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, be sure to check out the boxes on screen. You can leave a like rating on the videos as well when you're enjoying them. And you can check me out at various socials and a link tree link down in the description below. With all those things said, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Thursday. And I will see you all next time.